how we're gonna do the photo mat and then put it in a frame. So what we got here is we have 8.5 by 11, also support letter size uh, print. Uh, we have a photo mat. Uh, the inner size of the photo mat is uh, 8.5 by 11 as well, and the outer size is 11 by 14. And we have 11 by 14 frame by Belmont. Uh, you can find those at Michael's stores. And we always begin with assembling photo mat. So photo mat pretty much consists of two parts, the front and the back. Um, Usually before I start, I inspect the front part, make sure it doesn't have any dinks, any um, damages. And uh, also the photo mat has a little groove, uh, so called a V-cut. So when you assemble it, you want to make sure that it's facing down. Okay, we're going to align two sides. We're going to use some weight to hold them together. And now we're going to use um, self-adhesive fabric tape. This tape is acid free and I'm going to cut it slightly shorter than the width of the photo mat because you guys can also notice that I'm using gloves those are cotton gloves I like to use them as much as I can during any of this to reduce the amount of fingerprints, smudges so we're going to remove the backing from the tape and apply it right in the middle while pushing two photo mats together gently I'm just going to put it on the other side Straighten out. I have a little roller. You can also do this with your hand. Okay, so this part is fairly easy. Basically, you have a photo mat that's assembled as a book, like this. Now, next step would be to align the photo within the photo mat. So, uh, as I said before, the photo mat inner opening is eight and a half by 11. However, that's a nominal size. The actual size is a slightly smaller. They do that for the reason so photo mat covers part of the photo. So what I usually do, I use one of the ways to move the photo around like this. That makes it slightly easier. And with the smaller sizes you can pretty much um, eyeball the position and you just open, close it and see if you like it or not. Um, it also allows you to recrop your photo a little bit. So like here, I don't want the head to go too close to the edge, so I'm going to put it right, move it down. So with a small photo mat, you can pretty much eyeball the angle and make sure it's not tilted. However, if you're using larger photo mat, or you want to make sure it's really straight, you can use a ruler like this. And if you put it right against the photo, you can see if it's actually aligned with the photo mat. However, once you do enough of them, and when you do the small ones, you can really get away with just eyeballing it. So we're going to close it a few more times. We're going to make sure nothing is on the edges. And also notice, so when you print the photo and you crop it, uh, just remember that the photo mat will cover a little bit of your picture. So when you crop it, make sure you don't have any important objects. Okay, sometimes what I do, I like gently slide it left and right to make sure there is nothing. The photo is not literally on the edge of the covering side of the photo mat. Okay, so once I position the photo, I'm gonna open it back. I'm gonna affix the photo mat again. Now we're gonna use a pencil and lightly mark the edges like this. Okay, uh, I'm gonna move the, holding the photo, I'm gonna move the weight slightly to the right. Uh, I'm gonna lift up the photo like this, and you can either hold it with your hand or you can use a cord ruler to hold the photo like this. I usually just use my hand. And using this tape gun, this is probably the only tool that's very specific to this operation that you cannot use any other tool besides this one. So I'm applying double-sided acid-free tape. So I go right along with the line, and I'm gonna put the second line, and now it's up to you, you can put it either straight and I just noticed I moved the photo just a little bit, sometimes it happens, so I'm just going to straighten out, that's why I have this line here on the right. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, now I'm going to release the photo, and as I let it go, using the other hand, I'm just slightly smoothing it out. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to move the weight on the other side, lift up this part of the photo, and I'm going to do one more line, here, and then I'm going to 
be another vehicle line in this direction. Okay. Same thing. You kind of move your hand from the center to the sides and corners, letting it go. Okay. Now I usually add two more strips here on the sides to hold the photo mat together. This is optional. It doesn't have to be. It's just the way I like to do this so the photo mat stays close. By the way, I'm using a four ply uh, standard issue photo mat. It's uh, acid free, very high quality. So I'm, before I close, I double check. Not that we can change anything, but once you close it, push it against the edges. I'm gonna use the roller to um, press the sides. So it's really not a difficult process if you do everything carefully step by step so this is how it looks like okay the sides are aligned um, sometimes the companies that create photo mats they don't cut it precisely the front and the back and that is uh, actually normal because the photo mat usually goes into the frame technically you can present it to the customer like this just putting it in a uh, clear bag of a matching size and then customer can either frame it on their own or I've seen some people using the photo mat just as it is. Okay, once you've done assembling your photo mat before you put it in a frame or give it to the customer, um, I usually roll this edge or the adhesive tape keeps it uh, like a book. And um, I would use this tool to get rid of, rid of any dust that you have. And if you happen to have any marks or anything while you were working on it, there is still a chance to save it, you don't have to scrap it, you can use this uh, specific uh, eraser, I'll put a link in the comments, and you can, most of the times you can gently work it off, say if you do have anything. So we're going to take our 11 by 14 frame, need to open it up. This photo matter has its own, this frame, I'm sorry, has its own uh, built-in photo mat. They're usually crap. They're not cut precisely. They're not acid free. So if you put a photo under it or over it, sooner or later this thing will contaminate the photo. The photo will start getting yellow around it. So I usually just throw it away. Okay, so we have a glass here. If you're using glass on top, I always suggest that you clean it. Because usually it comes, um, it comes um, pretty contaminated. So you just do a quick cleaning. Um, and then you put the photo inside, head up. And I usually use this sheet on the back. Uh, well, there's no specific reason, but I usually put it back. It kind of protects the photo mat a little bit. Then you put the backing. There we go. Then both sides again, and then use a I use a flat head screwdriver to close them back. Before I close all of them back, I usually like to tip it over and make sure I got the top of the frame matching with the photo. I want to make sure I don't have any debris between the glass and photo mat, because that would be a good time to open it back so there's nothing there. And I'm just going to quickly finish. You can, in some frames you can close it with your fingers, but I would still suggest using a screwdriver um, just to gently push down. Okay. Now the extra step, if you want to sign your frame, um, I use a acid-free uh, paint marker. They have it in different colors. I like using silver. You know, usually we just sign it on the back, bottom right corner. this video please let me know in the comments if you liked it or not if you have any questions and I will make sure to post links to all these tools they're inexpensive uh, except I believe for this gun all right here we go thanks for watching